Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 596. Dementia is delayed or prevented by replacing your estrogen. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is the replacement of estrogen. Uh, I've always told women that there were many studies that are both in the European and English and American literature that tell us that replacing estrogen to menopausal women in a high enough dose will prevent or delay the onset of dementia. And we're all afraid of having dementia. If we've ever had a parent that had dementia, either Alzheimer's or uh, from strokes, we, we don't want to be that patient. We don't want to be that woman who has that because then we have to have our children take care of us. And that's almost the worst thing that can happen. Um, but, but taking testosterone, excuse me, taking estrogen also lowers the risk of plaque developing on your neurons that cause actual Alzheimer's disease. So that's one specific kind of dementia. Uh, it also decreases insulin resistance and the onset of diabetes and obesity. And it decreases, by taking estrogen, you decrease your belly fat. Now you have, honestly, I, I would not take oral estrogen to decrease my uh, belly fat, but taking estrogen, it's going to be less than it would be if you didn't take anything at all. But obviously, estrogen helps with vaginal dryness and uh, osteoporosis, which in one of these studies were not studied as well at the same time. They were just looking at dementia, and they um, were not looking in the first study about how estrogen prevented the rest of the diseases of aging. Let me explain for a second this study. The studies study is uh, done by the um, by a, a paramedical um, magazine called re research magazine called Nature 2024 in March, and the title is Follicle Stimulating Hormones Role in Alzheimer's Disease. So they discuss a study they did where they tested. Um, mice, but then they test everything on mice that they then uh, give to us. They tested mice and they, they took out their ovaries and then they studied them to see how high their FSH and LH levels get. So let me go backwards a little bit and talk about the science of this. So when your ovaries die and they do die, all of this myth about, oh, they're still working stuff is baloney. I've seen thousands of ovaries with during my uh, training, but also during my practice and doing hysterectomies. And when you do a hysterectomy on a patient that has had menopause, their ovaries are like little almonds instead of nice round uh, walnuts. So this is not just an organ that is still living or doing anything. It is gone. So that means you are not making any um, estradiol, which is the young woman's estrogen. You're not making any testosterone because pure testosterone is only coming from the ovary. The precursors to it come from the adrenal gland and other androgens come from your adrenal gland, but they don't do the job of testosterone. But how your ovaries work, what stimulates them is your pituitary gland right here behind, between your eyes, about this far back in your, in your brain, your pituitary gland is running the show with all your hormones. And it uses FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, to stimulate the production of estrogen, and LH, luteinizing hormone, to produce testosterone and progesterone. And those two hormones are the reason your ovary can make estrogen and testosterone. But then when you go through menopause, 
That's all an ovarian deal. When you're out of eggs, you're out of estrogen, you're out of testosterone, your ovaries shrink and stop working. So that's menopause. Well, your pituitary gland only senses that you don't make estradiol or testosterone or progesterone anymore. So FSH goes up because your body is thinking, oh, we don't have enough stimulation, so we're going to try to stimulate the ovary more. The FSH goes up, the LH goes up, you get hot flashes, you get anxiety attacks, you can't sleep, you're awakened all night long with these miserable symptoms, and that's FSH and LH. Now, if you let this go on, then what that does is they found that FSH elevated levels and LH elevated levels, uh, if not treated with estradiol and uh, testosterone or progesterone, uh, these two high stimulatory hormones then stimulate the production of plaque on your uh, neurons. And that is what Alzheimer's is. So not only does it cause Alzheimer's not to take estrogen after menopause, but it also can uh, cause osteoporosis. And it's not just the lack of estradiol that causes osteoporosis, it's the elevation of FSH and LH that go to the bone and cause it to dissolve. So that's what this study told us. That's what we've known, those of us who have done hormone replacement, those of us who have researched it, read about it, know it like the back of our hand. We've known this for years. They did a few other studies that went along with this with people, and they found that women who have menopause, meaning no ovarian function, before 40, have a 35% higher chance of getting dementia. And that is, is paralleled with getting early osteoporosis. So it's not just the lack of estrogen, and it's not just the lack of testosterone. It is also the hormones that respond to that lack and elevate and cause other physiologic changes in your body that cause you to age and be sick, basically and lose your mind, which I don't intend on ever losing mine. So I make sure that I get enough estradiol and enough testosterone um, in my pellets, which gives me enough estradiol and testosterone to suppress FSH and LH. That's how they're suppressed, by taking estrogen and taking testosterone that shuts down that production. Your hot flashes go away. You can think clearly. Um, any any sign of uh, mental um, destruction or, or deterioration goes away, then bone, bone densities usually go from osteopenia, which is halfway to osteoporosis, back up to normal in two years after starting estrogen and testosterone. But what I'll tell you is, when I get patients who are on oral estrogen, they still have high FSH they still have high LH. That's a problem because they're not being protected because their doses are too low. Now, their doses may be too low because they have side effects to that kind of estrogen, which is common. Um, you don't wanna be nauseated all the time because you're taking estrogen. Some people get that with the pill, some people get it with birth, excuse me, with um, hormone-related replacement. So, it is one of those things that you have to get enough of to turn off the FSH and LH surges. If you have hot flashes, if you have night sweats, or if you have anxiety attacks, your FSH and LH are too high, and they are still doing damage to you. So this study shows that, and I only bring it out, not because this is news to me, but it seems to be news to everybody else. Um, they've kind of ignored this. The easiest way and the actually the least expensive way to take care of all of these symptoms of menopause, like hot flashes, night sweats, prevent Alzheimer's, prevent osteoporosis, is not yet another drug. It's giving you back what you're missing. It's so easy, they made it so complicated. It's one of those things like, what, is, what can make somebody not be logical? Well, this lack of, of logic in the system of medicine is, is started by the, 
pharmaceutical companies wanting to sell a patented new drug to do the same thing that estrogen has always done. And because they can't make it do what they want it to do in the form of an oral pill, they try to use other things. And these other things have side effects. And then you're taking 10 drugs instead of just taking your estrogen. So this is my problem with all the new, oh, we have a new drug for hot flashes. Okay, does it take care of osteoporosis? No. Does it take care of your Alzheimer's? No. It just stops hot flashes. That makes no sense to me when you could take one thing and stop your hot flashes. Well, our patients get their FSH and LH to come down and literally come to the range of where you were before menopause. And that's the goal. The goal is to give somebody enough estrogen, estradiol, to bring, bring down their FSH to below 23 and to bring their LH below 10. That is the ultimate goal in treating somebody with estrogen and testosterone or estrogen alone. Um, there was a second study that came out at the same time. This one uh, was from the American Heart Association um, during their cardiometabolic health conference this year. Uh, they found that women who experience menopause before 40 have a 35% increased chance of dementia and heart disease. So that's because they have many more years <laughs> of being without their estrogen. And this is something that you need to know if you're if you are before you are younger than 40 and you're taking Lupron, which is a medication used by OBGYNs, I used to use it as well, and to treat endometriosis, and it's used by um, infertility doctors to cycle people so that they can do in vitro. Lupron puts you into a menopausal state. It shuts your ovaries down completely and makes your FSH and LH go up. And I remember having taken taken this and having these hot flashes that were like, I'd want to strip down in public. They were so bad. I didn't, however. Um, these, these were really bad. And I ended up at age 42 having osteopenia, uh, which is thin bones. But I, at that time, I looked at all the different drugs that you could take. And I still had a uterus and I still had ovaries. And I decided that I wasn't going to take any of those osteoporosis medications because my estrogen would and testosterone would eventually make better bone and it would grow back and be better and I was hoping that I wouldn't have any of the other side effects of menopause early. And the reason that I didn't is in this interim is that when I had a hysterectomy, then I got estradiol and testosterone and that saved me and my bones are great. And I don't have signs of dementia, although you would get a different answer from my daughter or son-in-law. Anyway, um, <laughs> just too many things to think about all the time. So. The, the other thing that they found out was that if you uh, had menopause before 45, that you were 1.3 times more likely to have dementia before you reach 65. And that has to do with having low estrogen and high FSH and LH. So these studies are new. These studies, have, they're on top of all the other studies that I've read that have been out there, but nobody talks about. So I'm now talking about a study that is current. They've done, they, it's done in a good way. It is a responsibly done study. Both of them are. And it says you need to replace your estrogen if you're menopausal. If you can, you need to get enough estrogen to shut your FSH down to below 23, shut your LH down to below 10. And if you are really worried about dementia, also get your testosterone in non-oral form to decrease your risk even more. So people who take both estrogen and testosterone, who are female, of course, they delay the onset for 20 years, not just 10, 20. So if you were going to get, so that, re, that would mean if you were going to get uh, dementia when you were 65, you'll get it when you're 85. If you're going to get it when, when you're 85, you'll die of something else before you get dementia. So that's how you keep your brain through aging. And I, I just want to reiterate, 
whenever one of these studies comes out, they come out with something else that makes estrogen look scary. I don't know what that is. I don't know what they're trying to do except keep us off estrogen so that we'll die early. I don't know. But right after these two studies came out, another study came out that said that estrogen causes uterine cancer. Well, we know that. Estrogen given alone to somebody with a uterus can cause uterine cancer if they haven't been ablated or had the lining of the uterus removed. Yes, that's true. That's why we give progesterone, because progesterone prevents that. So don't listen to these scary studies. They're just set up to, those type of uh, news reports are literally set up to scare you. And women shouldn't be run by fear. Uh, that's my advice. Don't run by fear. Read the study yourself and see if it applies to you. Thank you for listening to my HealthCast. We will see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.